Welcome back everybody, Joe Everest, the fence expert. And we're having a conversation with Brent Manufacturing. We've already talked about, we've taken a look at the chain link weaving machines. We've talked about galvanizing before versus galvanizing after. I haven't seen the comments yet, but I have the feeling there's a few good ones in there. Uh, the conversation I'd like to have today and to bring you guys into the conversation is the, that manufacturers of today and tomorrow look very different than the manufacturers of yesteryear when we were kids sort of thing. And, and I really think, I've had this discussion kind of off camera, I guess, but I really believe this is where the infrastructure is going or yeah. the supply chain is going in that, you know, we're, I think we're really getting away from warehouses full of hundreds of machines that are just constantly going and you know, some in some in disrepair, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, more to facilities that maybe have less than twenty machines. Yep. Uh, so here at Brent Manufacturing, you guys have four machines running. Yep. And that is an impressive operation to watch happen. I mean, it's it, you're bringing in all the strand, and there there's a mountain of strand out there. <laughs> there's a lot of it. We do a lot. Yeah. And it's all getting woven in, and, and in a matter of minutes, it goes from strand to a roll of chain link, yeah. and it's just over and over. Uh, impressive to watch. If you guys haven't watched the video where I go through and talk about the ins and outs of how these machines work, you should really check it out. Uh, I got a kick out of just being able to sit and watch all that all that machinery work. But to get back to the point, uh, I really feel like operations such as yours are where things are going my opinion, and I'd like to hear your opinion on it, my opinion is that you guys are probably more responsive to market demands. Yeah, absolutely. I think being uh, a little bit smaller, uh, it's more, you know, if we have a problem or if you're looking for quotes or, you know, customer service, I mean, you can get a hold of me. Yeah. Even, you know, where in big corporations, it's hard, you know, it's kind of a number system, you uh -huh. kind of work your way up the ladder. Um, I'm, a, you know, I, I give my salesmen and people uh, the right to make decisions and, you know, I'm, they can walk one office over, get an answer and have an answer for their customer in, yep. in 10 seconds. Um, so yeah, I think it's kind of going that way. Um, I think the hiring problem kind of going on in the United States, if you got a hundred machines, it's hard to find a hundred weavers, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, so I kind of think that's going to, hurt the bigger operations, um, absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's- Well, and you hit on something that I think is important to talk about and that's customer service. Yeah. Uh, we had had a conversation off camera yesterday talking about how just in general, unfortunately, customer service is, is all but completely gone. Yeah. And, and not just in the manufacturing, I think you're seeing this in a lot of different steps in the fencing industry or a lot of different phases in the fencing industry because there's so much demand, Yep. right? So there's, there's more demand than supply. And so those with the supply are kind of in the position to pick and choose where that supply goes. Uh, and, and I feel like they know it. Yeah, absolutely. you know, as as a fence contractor in my fence business, I really get that feeling when talking. Not all manufacturers. I'm not talking about all the suppliers, yeah. uh, but there are a few that really are just in over their heads, and the customer service is completely gone. Yeah. Uh, to your point about quotes, quotes could take a day, two days. Uh, we put out a big fittings quote. Uh, it's been a, it's been probably a month ago now, and there was one supplier, a national brand that they took almost a week getting it back to us. And when they did, we'd already made our decision. Yeah, you know, we had, it, there was a few uh, suppliers in there that were pretty responsive. Um, but more than more than not, we got we had one bid that came in the day of. I sent it out, we got bid back. The rest of them were two, three days later. And this one was a week later. <laughs> and I think I think that's what you're seeing on on the corporate end, yeah, right absolutely. on these on these corporate manufacturer ends, just maybe because our heads are, are underwater, maybe due to the staffing issue, yeah. Uh, but the point remains yeah. that you know if we're looking for quotes on wire, that we could talk to you directly or yeah. Gabe. Yeah. You know, so what made this happen? The reason I'm sitting right here is uh, we had a, a reaction video of a different weaving machine, and I'd made a comment that man, I'd really I'd like to watch one of these things run in person. These things are impressive. And I'm telling you what, guys, the day that video came out, Gabe shot me a message. He's like, hey, we'd love to have you out. We'd love to show you the machinery. And uh, I, I think that video, I'll have to go back and look at the calendar, but I think that video was only out a few weeks ago. It came out a few weeks ago. Yeah. So uh, talk about responsive. Yeah. Uh, you guys are on it for sure. Yeah. But just being able to be a fly on the wall here, I got to see that interaction where you guys were having just real-time conversations on supply coming in, strand coming in versus, you know, what orders were ready to go and all that. And it's, 
it's impressive to see how responsive you guys can be versus you know maybe one maybe a larger operation yeah uh, in terms of responsiveness of like market demands, I'd also have to think, so the analogy I use is, you know, some of these large manufacturers are more like aircraft carriers. It takes a little bit of time to change directions. Yeah. Where, you know, you guys might be a cutter or something like that, a little bit more nimble. Yeah. To where if you see a uh, demand in the market, you know, if you start getting calls for seven foot 11 gauge, something yeah. crazy, uh, you could pretty easily change one of the machines over and start weaving seven foot 11 gauge. Yeah, right? absolutely. I mean, we got the capabilities of, you know, running anything to 12 foot and under, um, you know, any sleevage we need on those. Um, so yeah, for us to get a call, get a specialty order, um, we had some, some weird orders we've done. Uh, we just sent some stuff out to North Carolina that was a three foot twist twist Really? Uh, yeah, nine gauge. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's nice that those customers were able to call us up. And yeah. the reason that, you know, that it all went all the way to North Carolina is he kind of worked down the customer or the, the other manufacturers and how, how busy they are and the demand mm -hmm. for things. You know, they don't want to change their machines over to fill those kind of orders. So, sure. um, yeah, having that little bit of customer service with us and the ability to be, you know, not as compact and you know they they got big huge contracts with you sure. know department stores and stuff it allows us to free our machines up and uh you know help people out get their specialty wires and their oddball things and yeah. you know well 10 years ago if you wanted three foot nine gauge the answer would be we'd sell you some six foot nine gauge and you could cut it down yourself <laughs> and knuckle it uh which isn't always the best answer uh i'm familiar with cutting it down and knuckling it because that's what we used to have to do to get five foot nine gauge yeah. for cantilever or cantilever gauge for six foot fence measure five foot tall and uh, these hands have cut some six foot nine gauge and knuckled it over. Yeah. Uh, but we do a lot of gate wire for people. Sure. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of people that, you know, if they got five foot gates, we'll, we'll instead of making 60 inch, we'll make them 58 inch. Okay. So, okay. You know, just to, so they don't have to cut it and do it themselves. I mean, sure. It's just an easy switch on the machine and. You know, we've helped a lot of people out in that way. So, well, I think that's a good illustration yeah. of exactly what we're talking about. That, you know, sometimes if you were to make a phone call to uh, one of the, one of the larger suppliers or manufacturers, we might say if you ask for fifty-eight inch <laughs> eleven gauge, <laughs> you, you you might get hung up on. Yeah, you might yeah. get hung up on. They'll or, say or, okay might, and send you sixty. Yeah, inch. <laughs> or, or they'll say, "Is this a prank? Yeah, Who right. set you up to this?" Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it's interesting to see how responsive operations like yours can be, and. Like I said, I'd like to get your opinion. What I, what I really see this becoming more normal. Yeah. I really see, not that it's abnormal. I don't mean to yeah, say no, that, no. but I, I really envision us as an industry getting away from having three or four large plants that do the commons a ton, but not much else, to more of operations that have maybe say 20 or less machines. That seems like a good delineation. Yeah. Um, what, do, what do you think? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think we're gonna, I think we used to see it. I think 10, 10 years ago, there was a lot more weavers on the market yeah. um, and then they got bought up. Sure. You know, these bigger companies bought these guys up because they saw the value in it too. You know, logistics obviously is a big part of it. Yeah. Um, and with how trucking's going and how it's kind of becoming, yeah, I think a lot more people are gonna, want to get machines for themselves that push a lot of volume and yeah it's going to kind of strategically help people um throughout the united states and i kind of think we're going to see more of that i do think the big corporations will let it happen for a while and then kind of buy the the small guys up again um I and i think that. you'll see that trend a little bit um but yeah i think we're kind of going that way that's kind of normal in other industries yeah. too yeah, that absolutely. you see you know, I, I think of in, in our in Springfield, we had just had a, a large uh, trash company come by a bunch of smaller trash companies. Yep. And in talking with some of these guys, that's kind of their business model is you grow to a point where the larger company, you start becoming a pain to them and then they come acquire you. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see, you know, I, I could probably see that happening, yeah. especially as these machines. I mean, it, they're not easy to come by. No. You, you can't just go order one today and have it here next week. <laughs> oh, yeah, they got long lead times like everything. Sure, um, sure. Yeah, they take a minute to get. Um, they take a minute to learn how to run. Yeah. Um, but once you get the hang of it, I think it's, you know, it's doable. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, it's a lot of work. But, you know, if you're willing to put in the work, yeah, absolutely. Well, I think also, too, I think strategically, um, you know, if you look at the big boys, they're all kind of down in the south. Sure. Get a lot of Southern people. I think we're going to see a lot of Eastern, uh, a little bit Northern, more people kind of buying machines. Yeah. Um, 
just well, kind of helping out. That was kind of part of the conversation we had had last night was that it's confusing to see, you know, these manufacturers show up around the coast because, I mean, you, I don't, this is not a climate change discussion. And it, I, <laughs> I will not respond to climate change comments, but, but you are seeing more tropical storms come through the coast. Yeah. So it would seem like the, the obvious choice would start to bring those manufacturers inland away from, you know, away from this yeah. risk. Absolutely. But, but you're right. You see most of them in the south, particularly around the coast, probably because there's ports of entry there that are easy to get to. Um, that was a big decision for us bringing machines to Casper, Wyoming, is Casper's. We're 200 miles from the very center of the United States and okay. over 400 miles from the center of North America. And we thought, you know, we want to bring something to the heart. You know, I kind of feel like people are leaving the coast and coming more inland and into these places. Yep. Um, so I thought, hey, let's bring manufacturing into kind of the middle. I mean, I understand their strategic coastal, you know, they're getting foreign products. Uh, they're able to get them out on trains or get sure. them in on barges. Um, sure. So, yeah, I, I think. Uh, I think being on the coast, yes, you run into possibilities. A hurricane could stop the whole operation, and then we're back to huge price increases. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we've seen crazy. it. Yeah, we've seen absolutely. that happen where, you know, manufacturers might not be directly impacted, but if the electrical grid's down, yeah. the, the machines won't run, no yeah. matter how much you want them to. <laughs> You'll have to get a pretty big generator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. So, yeah, I, I think that's the trend. I really do. And, and talking with you and talking about talking to other guys in the industry, I see this as being, you know, this you, you guys are kind of the beginning of this trend yeah. of having operations that are just more nimble, really. Yeah to, you know, changing demands. And you're able to see, you know, demand in the marketplace other places such as, you know, color coded. Yeah. You know, that's that's a video that uh, is coming up where we're gonna talk about that you guys do your own extruding. Yep. So you're able to see that, hey, the extruded market here, there's a lot of demand, there's not as much supply. So yeah. we've got the capital available to invest in this equipment and now we provide it. Yeah, absolutely. On the extruding side, you know, extruding the wire, I mean, obviously everyone makes black and black's True. hard to come by, but, you know, it's so special to colors like green and brown. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, I, I feel if you call up some of the bigger guys and ask for some <laughs> green and brown, they'll tell you six months, you know, yeah. eight months maybe yeah. if they get to it, uh, yep. where what, we have it on the ground ready to go. And when people need it, we just, we, you know, our lead times are a little better sure. to help out. Sure. Yeah. Well, and, and yeah, because I think in the in the extruded market right now, you do hear that. So yeah. you can have any color you want, as long as it's black, yeah, to, yeah. to take from Henry yeah. Ford there. Yeah, yeah. there's a, just a massive amount of black, but not much brown or green in the yeah. market. Yeah, and then, I mean, there's even other colors I've seen, you know, yellow and white and red. and. Well, so we have a facility, a storage facility in town that's white, <laughs> and it's all white. And and that's kind of the ongoing uh, uh, conversation in our office with them is, you know, we, we, we bought a bunch and sat on it for a while because they're – it's a storage facility that's on a corner. They get hit fairly often. Yeah. Uh, but the conversation last time was, "Hey guys, <laughs> there's not a lot of left. To, not a lot of this left." Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you do see some specialty colors, and that's something that you know an operation like this could probably change fairly quickly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, something like white. Say, if you you wanted to order white from us, I mean, we're talking six to eight weeks. I have woven oh, wow. woven white chain link for you. That's incredible. Um, yeah, Rather than six to eight months. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just the. Got to order some pellets, and sure. that's that's the lead time for us is the pellets. And once okay. we have the pellets, we always got the wire, and I mean, we can produce fast. So absolutely. interesting. It's yeah. good to know. I'll, I'll put that in my back pocket yeah. for sure. We can make sure. orange too. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, why in the world would that be a thing? Uh, interesting because uh, yeah, we do need some fence at the office. So yeah. those of you at the office watching, uh, stay tuned. Uh, and then. Without going too deep into it, you guys also have kind of some more news that's on the horizon too. Yeah, uh, some more demand that you've seen in the market that you guys are are kind of taking up the the mantle for. Yeah, we got some big things coming. Um, I think we're gonna make a big impact on the market to really help out some contractors and you know help kind of supply more people. Yeah. Um, kind of make it more of a competitive and you know equal thing kind of sure. to level the playing field across the United States. Uh, yeah, that's going to be coming here in July, August. Uh, we got some big news, so yeah. we're excited to announce it. I, so. And we've already discussed, I'm excited to come back and, and do a video specifically on that because I think you're right. I think it's going to, I think it's going to change 
you know, kind of the way people look at the industry, maybe. Yeah. Uh, bring, bring a little bit more eco-friendly twist to the industry. Yeah, absolutely. Very interesting. Yeah. So what what more is, or what, have, what haven't we talked about as far as, you know, the, and, and I don't want to minimize your guys' operation by just saying the small operator versus the, maybe the corporate. So maybe that's the delineation, the private versus the corporate yeah. manufacturer. What do you see on your end? I mean, you obviously see it day to day. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, if you, you, you take companies that have a hundred machines um, and then you take us that have four, you know, the, that hundred machines, most of the time, not all hundred machines are running. You sure. know, they, even they're running a handful. Um, with our four machines, we can produce 80,000 feet a week. Which Dang. for us, I mean, that's it's big. It's you know, quite a bit. We run a night shift and a day shift, and uh, we can we can push out some serious product. I mean, we're talking four or five trucks a, a week. Um, sure. And I, I, with these bigger guys, you know, they they tend to have more orders. You know, yep. bigger customers, so their lead times are further. But if their production's not there, you know, which, I mean, if they're running their machines at five hundred RPM compared to us at nine fifty, I mean, it's like I have two of their machines. Sure. You know, sure. so. Um, I think you find out that I, you know, I don't think it's about the, the quantity of machines. I think yeah. it's about the quality and the uh, just being uh, efficient. Well, you know, you, you, I think you hit on something there in that you guys have some personnel here that absolutely make these machines hum. Yep, absolutely. I mean, we, we saw that firsthand yesterday. Uh, we came in, one of the machines said it was down at a, at a misweave or something, and within minutes, that thing was back up and operational and rolling out more more uh, chain link. Yeah. So I, I think you're hitting on something there, and we talked about it earlier, but in ta- in terms of personnel, yeah, right. So one thing that we're seeing too is the difference in um, in hiring practices and and compensation and just how how these you know team members are treated in a privately owned operation versus you know more of a, a corporate type yeah. operation. Um, which probably again makes all the difference in the world when you're looking at output. Yeah, absolutely. I think that the the big guys still do it well. Don't get sure. me wrong. Sure. Um, I think these little guys like us, and you know, as we get bigger, are just kind of kind of draw their attention more. Sure. You know, I mean, we we sell the big guys as well. Well, um, and but. and here's the thing. So we talk about this a lot when we're talking about multiple fence companies in the same city, not necessarily being competitors. Yeah. I mean, the the pie is so large that one fence company couldn't possibly cover the needs of that community. I think we're having that same conversation now on the national scale, that there's so much demand for fencing in general that not one, not two, not three manufacturers could take care of that. And we're seeing that, right? When we're talking about 20 week lead times on some common sized wire, I think that's very obviously a sign that there's more demand than supply. Yeah, galvanized wire specifically is, I mean, it's a sought after thing. I mean, we use galvanized wire in all sorts of applications from vineyards, uh, yeah. you know, power lines. I mean, all sorts of things have galvanized wire. Um, and us weavers, you know, we're, they kind of, these bigger companies that sell strand, you know, they don't make strand specifically for weaving. Sure. It is a weaving wire, but they're making other wires as they're making the weaving wire. So, um, yeah, I think having a demand for these wires is is kind of growing the you know growing the need for it and sure. and it's it's not there you know there's only so many people that make rod in the united states yeah. Uh, yeah it's hard to get stuff off barges obviously get foreign things um so yeah it's 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 hard you know i mean i can't imagine these bigger companies that have 100 machines you know if we're doing eighty thousand feet they got to be doing you'd think half a million you know sure. got 100 machines i mean yeah. and, but if you add that up i mean that's million a pounds a week kind of thing i mean so yeah I, I think the the demand is is a little high and it'd be nice to see more people on the market that can provide galvanized wire to people sure so. sure well and and provide exactly what they need yeah you know just to circle back around to that conversation about 58 inch wire yeah that you guys are more able to quickly take care of market needs too yeah. um, and and you're filling a need that's simply not being met yeah. Right. So it's not that it's taking away from anyone. It's simply filling gaps and supplying demand that's being not met, unmet. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 
And everyone's had big lead times for everything, you know, sure. and our, our lead times just got better with the, the adding of the machines. But, you know, our, our typical lead times three to four weeks, you know, on a, on an order. Um, sometimes we can make it faster. If we got it in stock and you need one extra pallet, whoop, whoop, throw it on that pallet, you know, throw that on the machine and say, hey, this guy needs some nine foot, let's get it done and yeah. your truck's out the door. So, yeah. Well, no, that was one of the conversations we had yesterday too, is I, um, I was looking at eight foot nine gauge of truckload and from two of the manufacturers, their reply was 18 weeks. Yeah. So we can have it to you in 18 weeks. And then to which you responded like, well, I could beat that <laughs> by a fair margin probably. Yeah, I think I said I had some of it sitting yeah, out it's there. It's sitting out there right now, actually, so, yeah. Like, I think I could have it there before you got home. Before I, <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what you said, that yeah. wire could beat you home. Yeah. So. Uh, but I, I think that illustrates the point, yeah. right? That having having these privately owned independent manufacturing facilities throughout the United States is really where things are going because yeah. it really fills a need. Now, I don't see it taking away from these nationals because no. they're producing, you know, six foot, nine gauge knuckle twist, the kind of the bread and butter of commercial fencing or something. Yeah. Uh, but because they're so busy supplying that, they just don't have capacity for others. So I, I, don't, I don't think they mind it. I think these no. bigger companies, it, it frees their machines up a little bit to kind of work on that six yeah. to nine gauge orders. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it doesn't take from them. I mean, you no. might be a, a merchant's metals customer and then you buy from us. Merchant's metals probably turns more people down. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just because their lead times are, they just don't have the volume. Well, it, and in your, in your beginning illustration, three foot tall nine gauge. I yeah. mean, it's, they're simply not going to have the ability no. to produce that anytime soon. So for to them, for you to produce that, like you said, kind of takes that burden off them of worrying yeah. about, hey, we're gonna need to shut down a machine, we're gonna have to retool it, we're gonna have to do all this. Yeah. Or we can keep producing all this wire that's currently in high demand. Yeah. So the way I kind of picture this is, so again, we have multiple fence companies in a community, but some of them specialize in wood and some of them specialize in chain link, some of them specialize in vinyl. Yeah they're not really each other's competitors, hmm. right? Because the guy that installs vinyl might not like to do chain link at all. So when he gets that call for chain link, this happens a lot in our office where we don't do vinyl. So if we get a call in for someone that wants a vinyl privacy fence, we explain we simply don't do it. However, here's a couple good options. Yeah. You know, this, that's kind of really how I see this happening is to the, to the large national manufacturers, you guys are a nice augmentation to what they offer yeah. because again, three foot nine gauge, they're not, gonna, they're not going to be interested in shutting a machine down to run a truckload of that or no, something like yeah, that. Absolutely. So I think, I, I think when I've had this conversation with other people, there's been kind of a hesitation. I says, well, I don't know, like the, these other suppliers aren't gonna like it and then there could be some infighting. And which could be, I mean, you see that on the fencing, the install side that you still see guys in the same community, maybe not fight, but just not get along because they think they're each other's competitors. Yeah. I can see that on the national scale too, but I think the biggest takeaway here is that independent operators are really providing a needed augmentation to that national and that we can all get along together. Right? Yeah. There's no need for this infighting. There's uh, definitely enough work for everyone. Yeah. I mean, that's how I've kind of felt. I mean, and it's, it's just, you'd be surprised. I think when you realize who's selling to who and, you yeah. know, I mean, there's people, people don't know about and, you know, be everyone stays in business and is happy. I, sure. I think there's enough for everyone. So. Absolutely. Well, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd really like to, to continue this discussion maybe in the comments section. Uh, we discussed uh, that I'll be coming back for a, for a big announcement here uh, later on this year, middle of the year. So, so maybe we could continue this conversation then yeah. uh, based on comments that you guys leave in the comments below. As we wrap this up, I want to say thank you. I've said it in other videos, but I want to make sure I say it here too, that you guys have been such gracious hosts. I mean, you're welcoming to, you know, for me to come in and, and basically open all the doors and, and let me see what's in all the rooms. And uh, it's eye-opening for sure. It really is to see. Uh, for me, I think it was the efficiencies, yeah. how everything here is run incredibly efficient uh, because of good team, mem team members. Yes, right? absolutely. Like it's, everyone's just 
clicking on all cylinders here. Yeah, um, we're definitely blessed with the team we have. So absolutely. Yeah. I want to say thank you yeah. for having me over and introducing me to, to your team and let me see everything and and really kind of starting this. Uh, we had, we had discussed this off camera, but starting this is just like a, a friendship for years to come. Yeah, absolutely. So. I appreciate you coming out and giving us the time and absolutely. making us kind of a feature. I think. Uh, you know, if people need chain link, yeah, we're another option. So absolutely, 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 for sure. Because so, if you guys out there need three foot tall nine gauge, <laughs> we know a guy. <laughs> we know a guy that I'm can do guy. that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, like I said, if you've got questions, comments, drop them in the comments below. I'd always love to continue this conversation. Uh, but until next time, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. And I'll see you next time.